You're listening to the Well Woman Podcast. I'm your host, Gemma Lee, women's menstrual cycle educator, natural fertility coach, and daytime mermaid. This is a place where we discuss all things periods, poo, ovulation, fertility, and sex. Join me weekly as we rediscover our menstrual cycles, unlock its superpowers, and guide you back into your cyclical nature. Amber, welcome back to the show. Thank you. So, so good to be here, Gem. I'm honored. We haven't recorded an episode together in a really long time. Very long time. Like, I think the last time we recorded together, <sighs> were we living together? Maybe, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Like, really fucking long time. Uh-huh. Well, <laughs> well, welcome. There's going to be lots of people who... I'm sure they should know about you if they follow us on Instagram. They should definitely at least know about you now. But Mm -hmm. if they don't know who you are, tell us what day of your cycle are you on today? How are you checking in? She's always just like, shit, I've got to check this. I think I'm about 12. Just let me check. Oh, she's done. Oh, stop it. Day 12. (laughs) And how are you checking in today in this moment? I feel amazing. I feel really alive in my body. My energy is great. I've slept well for two nights, which is rare in my world. <laughs> I mean, slept well being interrupted every two hours to breastfeed, but, you know, in between I'm sleeping well. And, um, yeah, energy's high. Heart feels great. feel expansive. A little bit, uh, a little bit of mental noise going on. The new moon has some some big shifts coming through, so uh yeah body feels great nice I like this thank you for sharing and checking in with us now there's going to be people who don't know you so tell us who is Amber Hawken and how do you describe what it is that you do now since stepping into the portal of motherhood Hmm. Hmm. Uh, well my name is Amber and I'm the mother of a beautiful 17 month old boy his name is Anakin or known as Annie P (laughs) because his last name is Pope the surname of my beautiful partner and father of our child Ryan I am um, I am a partner to Ryan and I'm a daughter of my beautiful father and my mother she has passed uh, in this life and I am Uh, someone who practices holding others through uh, different stages of their life and their transitions, really. Um, My qualification list is, um, (laughs) you know, pretty long and something I I find boring to read out so they can go and have a look at if they want to. Um, But I have a background first in in medical science, um, which I really enjoyed studying and learning about. Um, but didn't really enjoy the practice of it in radiation therapy. Just some of the the values of Western medicine didn't really align with me. It didn't feel right. Um, the approach, the reductionistic approach. And so I left after um, five, six years doing that. Uh, but that includes the study. So I was only 18 months out and I was, and I left after graduation, 18 months after graduation, I left. I went and studied human behavior and different forms and different modalities of healing from different uh, beautiful cultures around the world, ancient modalities, modern therapies that are more holistic, dealing with the psychosomatic or the transpersonal, emotional, mental, spiritual, and it's all kind of wound in together with um, other facilitators in, in their field. And we run retreats called Alchemy, which uh, a really deep healing and activation and rites of passage type work. And, um, that's my day to day. I support facilitators in their, um, journey. Kind of just be me in my life. (laughs) I can cook delicious, slow cooked meals and not very good at cookies and muffins, but I do love to cook them anyway and try spend my life hanging around with my family and traveling the world when we can. And there's all sorts of um, ways to describe what I do, but I hope that gives a a broad picture. 
you're a magical human is also another thing you could say. Yes, um, yes. Love you. And we're totally talking about nothing that you do for work-wise. We're actually talking about your personal experience today around yeah. menstruation, which you know about. Um, you know that that's a topic and that I haven't just dragged you under the under the bust for it. But <laughs> let's go back and talk and let's just put into perspective, like, who are we in our friendship when we talk about menstruation? Like when you attend your retreats and mm-hmm. women are like, oh, I can't, I can't talk about my period with my partner or my friends or like, how would you describe how we discuss menstruation and blood <laughs> and everything? <laughs> well, I mean, as you know, it's pretty standard um, for me to send you a photo of the color of my blood because it's so ripe and red and I'm using it as a face mask before I go to yoga and it's pretty standard for Ryan to find jars of (laughs) blood and water that I'm pouring onto the plants um, each menstrual cycle and that's just pretty standard in our world Mm. Um, which needless to say uh, honestly even five years ago that would have flipped me the fuck out so um, this isn't something that I um, yeah it's been a relationship that I've developed particularly after becoming a mother Um, but that's our world it's quite standard blood's Mm. normal bleeding's normal size size feel shape of uh, cervix and um and mucus is pretty standard conversation (laughs) very standard conversation standard text messages standard messages from ryan um but let's let's I, i wanted to go there first because i think it's a great reflection for people that we're not necessarily well our generation anyway anyway wasn't born into just growing up like this in a household where this was just something where your mom just wore menstrual blood on her face once a cycle um which I know Annie is going to definitely grow up in a in a family household that's like that yep and how did it start for you let's talk about your very first menstrual experience can you can you take us back then in your life Roughly how old were you, if you remember the the time and the age? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And what was it like for you becoming a menstruator? I was 14. And so I think it was year nine or year 10. No, year 10, because I remember the friend and she came in year 10, uh, the friend's mum who taught me how to use a tampon or tried to teach, like tried to teach me before I went into the toilet because I had pads, um, and they felt so uncomfortable. I was very sporty. So it was something that felt really uncomfortable, but I did it because the idea of a tampon, there was also a taboo that it was quite slutty to use a tampon, uh, which is interesting. I'm just remembering mm. back now. Um, yeah, that you would be a slut or a ble- break your, you wouldn't be a virgin or, or something if you used a tampon. Yeah, I remember that now. Wow. You, yeah, it was really um, around like a, a, like a sluttiness or a, a skankiness or a, it would affect your... I guess it would talk about breaking your hymen and uh, yeah, all these different things. And um, I remember tampons being quite painful and uncomfortable, but I did enjoy the freedom of not having to wear uh, a pad um, being as sporty as I was played uh, state representative soccer football. Um, It was gross to talk about with men with boys, teen, teen boys and something that we yeah hid and kept secret, but was also like, well, you're kind of in the club. So you're also kind of cool, but like, do you use tampons or pads and how experienced and how long have you had it for? It was like a very, you know, it came with, um, all the teenage, uh, judgment and insecurities and, um, it was definitely not open as like an open conversation, um, or much education on it. I think everything I learned was quite a clinical, practical thing, but I don't remember anything being um, beautiful and nice and celebrated and easeful. And actually I, because I moved out of home at 14 and I was with my grandma for a little bit and she didn't want me to get pregnant because I had a boyfriend because she was uh, very strictly religious like that. And so she said that, um, and I had, I was getting acne. So she just told me to go to the doctor and get on the pill. And I did. Um, which I stopped at 20, 21 when I went overseas for a trip, just, just, just intuitively decided and didn't care anymore. Um, not sure mm. where that came from, but uh, yeah, I just, I remember going overseas and being like, no, I'm not going to renew my, uh, script. And I never went back on. 
Yeah, and you weren't. I remember it making me feel fucking crazy and psycho. And there was like Diane, and there was all the different names were like these, you know, women's names, and um, you know, we would compare what pills were on. And I remember us having discussions of being like, "Yeah, I'm on this one. Now don't get on that one. That makes you fucking crazy." And um, there was some awareness around that uh, when I was like 17, 18. So I think it was just an opportunity. I was like, "Yeah, fuck it, I don't need this." But I was from a from the country town, and um, it felt liberating to do that and and I just never looked back. Mm. But yeah, that was Isn't it interesting that even back then we were still talking about and I remember like you're triggering a memory for me around people comparing the types of hormonal contraception that they were using. Yeah. And isn't it interesting that even back then, before the world of social media and you know public discussions, that there was still recognition of the fact that different products in hormonal contraception created different experiences but yet we still continue to take them yeah it's wild mm. <clears throat> well yeah really wild so let's talk about your education around menarche how did you learn about your period getting your period was it before was it after was it during who was the core teacher who didn't teach you who would you have liked to have learned from Okay, so being that I moved out of home at 14, <laughs> it was just my mate's mum, I'm pretty sure. Um, <clears throat> can you ask me the questions one at a time? Yes, I can. <laughs> my brain doesn't hold anymore. <laughs> yeah, first one. <laughs> so first one is where did you get your menarch education? So yeah, your okay. first period education, where did you first hear about periods? I think it probably was, oh, my gosh, let me see if I can remember. It could have been my stepmom, but it also could have been my mum. Very brief. I remember having brown uh, mucus in my undies and mm -hmm. being fucking terrified of telling my stepmom because it was like a it was a transition point in my life where I was moving out of home. But she would have these rare moments where she was kind to me, but a lot of the time then there was not a lot of kindness between us. So I remember shaking and being like, fuck, is she going to lose her shit? But um, she told me it was my period and I think gave me some money and I went and bought some pads from like the Woolies. That was it. There was no, there was no education. I remember having heavy, heavy bleeds for like 10 days every two weeks though. Mm. It was a very... Um, I was very tired. And again, I was sporty. So I, maybe I went to school then and my friend had tampons and perhaps I, I was pretty, I was pretty confident with people's parents. So I probably just asked like her to, to help me. And I'm, and she gave me some tampons, some tiny, what were they like minis? The minis. Yeah. yeah with the pretty colors. <laughs> Did you and ever use an toxins. applicator? Not until... Europe, not until I traveled to Europe See, and I've I've my never Norwegian friends gave them. They're so much nicer. <laughs> yeah, I've never used an applicator. And terrible I actually, for the planet, but yeah. True, very terrible for the planet. But I also, I also feel that applicators weren't really much of a thing here in Australia like they were in America. Like applicators no. are like everywhere in America. Yeah, and, and it's same in Europe. There was mm. always, there was applicators. Yeah, it was my, my, my Norwegian girl, girlfriend of mine um, showed me and I was like, what the fuck? Um... But I I used a cup since 2017, a menstrual cup. So I went to, I did, I was doing a yoga teacher training in an ashram and uh, I saw it in a, like a pharmacy or a health food store there and didn't know I what it was. I remember like, you on this trip. Yeah. yeah. And I, in yep. Europe. Yep. 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 And I, um, I used a menstrual cup and I've, I, I've never looked back. Love. So yeah, my, I, I, I I just wish that I didn't have any women in my um, any women in my family who taught me anything about menstrual cycles that wasn't about like being able to just handle it and deal with the symptoms. There was nothing. There was nothing other than that. It was very minimal. I wasn't very close to my mom. You know, I told you about my stepmom, my grandma's suggestion so that I didn't get pregnant. <laughs> Which is a very Catholic, a very Catholic thing to do. Mm. Yeah. And, um, mm. that was it. Um, I, do you want me to keep going? Yeah, sure. Okay. 
I'm just going to go through my like journey of, of menstruation. So I, I went and uh, I traveled South America for three, almost four months. And that's when I went off the pill and my cycle was semi-regular, but not some, I think I remember having longer cycles. So it would have been around 40 days. Then I just remember it being like four or five weeks. And then I practiced, I was practicing Bikram yoga, a lot of Bikram yoga back then. And I'd left, just left radiation therapy and I was studying, um, uh, what it was called inner child healing. Um, I was doing my master NLP, uh, practitioner training that went across two years. And I was also studying deep state repatterning therapy. So it was like these, um, overlapping things as I was developing, uh, my skills in a different arena. And I hurt my neck in Bikram. Um, just doing a terrible rabbit, <laughs> shitty technique. <laughs> and then, um, woke up the next morning, had a really stiff neck and I called my friend who was a chiropractor and was like, Hey, can you help me out? He sent me to a chiropractor. I started seeing a chiropractor and within a couple of months. My cycle was the best it had ever been. And I didn't have any menstrual pain or anything. It was like, um, my menstrual cycle was quite beautiful. I enjoyed it. It was only a couple of days. I didn't have any pain. I would sometimes, um, like definitely mood would uh, drop and energy would drop in autumn and um, like just before my bleed. I, but I didn't really know that. I never, I didn't respect it in any way. It's not like I lived my life. I, it just kind of happened because it wasn't a big bother. I didn't think about it. I just like, I didn't have to take days off with pain. I didn't have to, that wasn't really, re I was really blessed with that. And it was probably just because I, I ate well, I didn't have a lot of, um, but I had plenty of stress, like plenty of stress of like mental stress and pressure on myself to build a business, um, that, you know, could have definitely impacted it. Um, but maybe just didn't impact it in that way. Mm -hmm. And I definitely didn't have a loving relationship. It just was. And I was stoked. I wasn't pregnant each time I got my period. <laughs> Isn't it interesting that a lot of people celebrate the arrival of their bleed because it's a sign that they're not pregnant? Yeah, it's crazy, as right? As opposed to the celebration of like, oh my God, this is like the most sacred stem cell rich yeah. liquid that, you know, feeds and streams from my vulva. So um, yeah, so, so interesting, the, the perspective between the two. And I think yep. also as we age, we gain a lot more education. Naturally that happens, but also we gain a lot more experience. Yeah. So what was it like for you in the transition being, I don't want to say a new mum because I feel like you've been a mum forever now. Um, <laughs> Still feels new. 17, 17 months. months goes fast, yeah. right? Um, but what was it like for you the last few bleeds that you remember having before discovering that you were pregnant? Yeah. Uh, so it, just for context wise, in about 2018, my relationship uh, definitely changed after holding a couple of alchemies for a few years. So the, the retreats we run and just working with women, actually look, like knowing you, I happen to um, live Maybe with two day. different or... menstrual cycle coaches. I live, I remember I lived with Alicia yes, as well. Alicia. Yep. Um, M taught me a lot and you taught me so much just, just by being around you. Um, so over those years from 2018 onwards, um, and it just, it was, it felt like a very easy, natural transition because it was, you, you were so embodied in it. So it was just like a witnessing. And then I picked it up and it just rolled like that. I, I can't even remember, but it, it turned into something that was like, it, it just, my relationship deepened out of witnessing you and watching you and learning from you, um, that felt very natural. And so I came to really love respect and, and shift my, my diet, my movement, um, and my, and my planning around it. And in the last two, three years, my entire business is uh, run around my menstrual cycle as, as best as possible. And so my bleeds, a few bleeds before um, pregnancy, I was actually moving into a dieta because I was going into a apprenticeship uh, with a teacher of mine for four months. And I was uh, having, uh, I was doing oh, a cleanse. Word. Sorry, I just had a flashback that you were doing this. Remember? Yes. Yes, I, yes, I do. You were yeah. cleansing and you were doing all the things. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and then I fell pregnant and was severely unwell and uh, didn't feel in any way, shape or form that I could show up to that. So I didn't end up doing it because uh, apparently my next rite of passage was pregnancy <laughs> and motherhood. And so my bleeds were, um, 
I remember the house I was in because Ryan and I moved in out of our home into a short term, short long term stay. It was like three months out in Talabadra. Um, I remember having my bleeds. I remember giving it to the plants. They were pretty standard and clean and normal. And then I remember doing a retreat and I always bled on the full moon. Mm. And it was all usually I would land retreats and I usually run them on a full moon or a new moon. And it was the full moon and we had the dance and I was like waiting to get my bleed. I'm like, oh, it's weird. But, you know, there's a lot. I'm holding a lot. So maybe my body will wait till I get home a few days later. A week later, I'm like, oh, my goodness me. My boobs are very sore. I still don't have my cycle. Just going to pee in a sticking case. Um, yeah. And then and then I was pregnant. And then Annie was like, yoo-hoo. But um, I, was, I got pregnant under the... Under my uh, lunar, lunar return, your yeah, lunar, lunar return. your lunar fertility, your natal return, yep. because Ryan and I always used my cycle and tracked it, and um, for contraception, just used my cycle, and so after I did bleed, was the day that we moved, and then I remember it was maybe two or three days after, so it would have been about day seven or day eight, um is when <laughs> is when Annie was conceived but we didn't know because yeah that that would be a normal time that um we would have sex and not worry about pregnancy but it was my um natal return yeah so everyone's which, probably listening to me like what the fuck is yeah so i'm like wondering where i stop and into um and and tell but i, I you're the expert so well, you can explain it. Go for it. And then I can, anything oh, you Oh, God, to... I'll butcher it. But okay, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> so essentially, the moon that I was born under, um, you know, that the wisdom says in, in the books of old and, uh, you know, our, our wise ancestors uh, tell us that we can ovulate twice, once um, during the, you know, the normal ovulation sometime in the middle of our cycle or that day 14, 15 or depending on how long your menstrual cycle is, how much have you taught me? Listen to me. Or <laughs> on, I'm just having under, a proud mum moment over here. Oh, <laughs> she's learned so or much. under the moon that you were born under, um, you can also ovulate. And I remember you telling me that Jane told you that that had to do with your relationship, probably with your bleed in the earth and your alignment. Um, mm. And so, the, you know, I would say that I was never pregnant prior to that in that time period because perhaps I, you know, had come into deeper alignment and better relationship. And so that's when it happened. And, you know, I had just been on a three month cleanse prior. So Annie was probably that like, was so this is my moment. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing him, very determined. Yes, right in. Yep. And so if people are listening to this and they're inspired to find out what your natal moon is, it's the angle between the earth, the sun and the moon at the exact time and vocation you were born. Mm -hmm. So knowing the exact angle is really important because if you recognize that you were born under a full moon, you need to know the percentage of the full moon because sometimes mm -hmm. that full moon percentage might be on the Thursday at like 11 p.m. or it could be on the Friday at like 4, 4 p.m. So then the actual angle is quite important and it can move. Have you done another like podcast on that? Because I feel like that that's so normal to you. And I'm even listening to that being like, oh, I got to fucking know how to do that. You need to run we a workshop on that. that. But yes, maybe we will do another um, podcast about this and I can talk maybe. about this particular topic. But it's just to answer the, the two little things that most people are going to be thinking about is like, well, how do I ovulate? So uh -huh. it's called a spontaneous ovulation and it's triggered. It's you don't have the same ovulation signs of cervical mucus. Mm -hmm. um, you don't feel the rise of estrogen. It's a trigger ovulation. And so the trigger of ovulation is sexual stimulation, mm. which is penis to vagina stimulation. Now, men also have a trigger of their spot their spontaneous ovulation and their same natal moon is the peak of their sperm count mm -hmm. or their peak of sperm health so yeah if you get two natal moons aligning or you've got a couple who are born under the same moon roughly it's very very amplified um but i love that you shared that because you know the transition to so it was it was spontaneously activated by ryan and i making love yes and and it is really cute. And the other thing is because you already have a deep connection with mm -hmm. yourself, your cycle, and the natural connection that you have with the cyclical nature of 
the world, the yeah. earth, the, the yeah. country, the sky, the moon, the you know, father sky, mm-hmm. mother earth. So all of that really plays in. And so it doesn't happen for everybody. Um, and there's a four day window to be aware of with that. Anyway, yeah, we'll have, a, we'll have another podcast Definitely. on that topic. <laughs> but let's talk about what it felt like for you. And at the time this comes out, people will know that I'm also pregnant. But what did it feel like for you? What did it feel like for you not menstruating all of a sudden? Because I'm really missing my period. And you know oh, this. Man, I miss it so much. I was, I would say to Ryan, I miss my bleed. It was such a beautiful time. It was like a, it was a time of rest and ease and celebration. And um, you know, I missed the opportunity. I I, I almost felt over full like the purge each month was so delightful and Mm. the release was so delightful so i just felt like built up and and then you know my pregnancy was far from enjoyable (laughs) besides the fact that i was growing human life which i completely honor but it was fucking hard i was so sick i was in a lot of pain mentally emotionally spiritually it was rocky as fuck like Mm. oh you know people are like pregnancy is so delightful it's like this is fucked and divine at the same time but it was both and so i i really grieved it i missed that purge because i i never got that okay i know if there's something that i want to release and so you know then i worked with the full moon because that's what i bled under last time but it, it absolutely didn't feel the same so i very miss i missed it a lot and then what was it like for you getting your first period back postpartum oh, so and happy. how how many months weeks do you remember that being after having annie yeah yeah it was four months um so pretty pretty fast very fast um i mean it was it was what it was gen generally speaking um from what i know that that is quite soon <clears throat> but my body was like yo let's do it again i'm like yeah no not yet or ever maybe but that's a conversation for another time um i was so happy i remember i was like yes it was the nicest and it was on a new moon so my my um menstruating time flipped from full moon to new moon uh, which was really nice because it was a um um I don't know. It was, I guess it was a little, felt a little easier because the intensity of bleeding on a full moon is like you have the, the, yeah, it's soft as the dice. That's a good word. Yeah. It felt softer. Um, but it's just after coming back from Europe, it's just flipped back to full moon. And I remember how unsoft that is bleeding on the full moon. <laughs> <laughs> intensity. Oh my God. Oh my God. I forgot how intense this was. Um, can be. Um, I love that you shared that. Thank you. Because it's quite common between the three and six month mark postpartum, but mm. also let's just share with everyone that you were and still are breastfeeding. Yeah. And a lot of people think that, sorry, oh, that's the thing that that's uncommon. It's yeah. not that it doesn't return. It's just because I'm still breastfeeding 17 months postpartum. I think we are. And yeah. So the prolactin, et cetera. Yeah. And so that's why we have so many conversations on the phone about different cycle lengths. And I'm like, let's go back and explore what your body was doing and how was Annie sleeping that those weeks? And was he teething? And were you feeding lots during the night? It's like very inquisitive, right? And so just the body is a direct reflection of what's going on with your own inner body cycle. Mm -hmm. Um, And I love that so much. So what since becoming a mother have you brought in to your cyclical nature and your bleed to honor your bleed now like bleeding is different with a child right oh yeah (laughs) so let's talk about like how do you honor your bleed as a mum? because I hear this all the time I don't have time to rest or I don't have time to make this thing for myself or I don't I can't do that how do you do that for you how do you make a little slice of heaven of honoring for your menstruation when she drops in Mm -hmm. um I'm really grateful to have a beautiful partner who's so on board and understands it. And he <clears throat> uses the moon for, uh, what we get, you know, as a bleed and a purge. And so, um, it's always a conversation to have a more restful time because he knows the one thing he constantly highlights and, um, it's, I think for, for whatever reason, this has stood out to him. And so it's always discussed and honored that, um, 
just before and first few days of the bleed, we must rest because otherwise we will, in his words, pay for it in the next bleed. <laughs> He's such a great student. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so even if our calendars are full, um, he'll just take any more. And so I can lean on him. At, like sometimes I need to just like lay down and I'll just do things like lay down. I, do, I stopped. Um, I make things that... I don't, I would normally do, uh, not a priority. I have to let go a lot. And this sounds, this might sound like a little ordinary and boring, but it's things like not cleaning up the house perfectly. It's like, fuck it. I just lay on the couch and I play with Annie on the couch or I just take it slower. I never book, um, I never book one-on-one. I only have two or three clients, but I never book my one-on-ones and I never book any huge events around my bleed unless I can, unless I absolutely have to, or it just lands there and I just, you know, do my best. So I really avoid having to be on demand for anything at all um, so that I can take it at a slower pace and I can take it at an easeful pace and I have to adjust. And there's like, we always have a choice. It's just like, are we okay with the consequence of that? So that means that, you know, it'll affect my timelines, my income, my world and my business, but I'm okay with that because uh, I don't think that there's anything more important than honoring and respecting this, because if I don't support myself as a mother and as the mother of our family and as the, um, yeah, that, that, that role that I'm so honored to have, um, it, it affects and it's, it's, I honestly think it's more selfish to ignore and more selfish to neglect than it is to receive. I don't think receiving is selfish. I think it's actually a beautiful devotional practice and, and, and a reverence for what is for all, for all of life, for where we each came from, um, in this process. And because we are the embodiment of life and death, uh, in this world. And so it's a respect and honoring of that. Um, you know, I might go to yoga, but I might lay in Shavasana the whole time, as you know, or I will, <laughs> yes. you know, I also love it because, um, and Ryan was actually so, super cute. He was proud of telling someone this the other day that the only time our roses really bloom is a week after my bleed because I'll pour, uh, you know, at least one or two of my menstrual, um, from my cup, stir it in water and give it to the roses. And so there's, it's like a, it's, it really is a huge purge in our house because there's often like longer meditations or bigger discussions or more journaling because it's a time of purge. There's usually deeper conversations because they rise to the surface. Um, there's more volatility. I'm a fiery person. I'm also, you know, I will ask Ryan to like, leave me alone, just stay because I absolutely like, I'm not able to be the witness of my cuntiness. It just comes out at times. And, um, yeah, just create as much space as I can. Uh, create as much grace as I can and create as much slowness as I can. Uh, I tend to cook more and eat more. <laughs> um, and I always uh, up my bone broth and make a um, Chinese herbal uh, boil concoction of uh, black dates, red dates and goji berries, which is a blood building tea because um, in the homeopathic world, I'm uh, my quality of my life is dependent on the quality of my blood and your body makes blood with the same thing it makes milk with and so i'm breastfeeding and so my milk reduces and so i have conversations with annie about that about eating more like it's a whole it's fucking huge like it's a huge 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 thing every single month that happens that our whole world shifts around but we navigate it well as a family now and it's just we know how it is and yeah it's big there's huge changes huge and it's so nice to hear someone share openly and honestly and vulnerably about it because I think this is true parts of like motherhood and being a menstruator that are not openly discussed. Like it's very rare that you check in with the mother at the markets. You know how we, we see so many mums at the markets on the Thursday. So how was your, how's your milk supply going? Have you started yeah. menstruation? Has that come back? Like, how's all that feeling for you? Um, Speaking of my boobs are so full right now. <laughs> she's like, oh my God, I need to express, which reminds me, I was getting a vision of you before you sent me a photo of you ex like pumping and expressing whilst having a face mask, <laughs> face mask and cooking dinner at the same time on the stove. And it's just about putting everything together as mm. best as you can and honoring that it's okay to not be perfect in the way of the world in inverted brackets. And oh, man, I'm so proud of you go. And I, and I love you so much. Thank you. I love you. Thank you for everything you've ever taught me and supported me with during. You're amazing. Oh, thanks. I love you. Um, you're worth it. Yep. Um, 
final question, because I know that you've got to get going. Am I running out of time? So firstly, before I ask you the final question, I have another question. How, oh, can, yes. people, how can people find you? Like what's the best avenue for them to learn about you, learn about your amazing retreats that I've had the pleasure of being on that are just mm. super, super impactful um, and to learn more about how you do you. Thank you. Um, Honestly, you could probably find me on the gram. I'm sure if you Google Amber Hawken, either a porn star or I will come up. Maybe it was me in a past life. You never know. Um, but Amber's such a such a common porn star name. I don't know why. Um, but H-A-W-K-E-N, Amber Hawken. Um, on Instagram, it's at Amber underscore Hawken. Again, H-A-W-K-E-N. And I think that'll be easier to find me. I'm, I'm the ginger, I'm probably wearing a hat in a photo or something like that. Um, I love your ginger. Yeah, color. my I I think that I would encourage people if they want to uh, learn more is actually go old school. Get on my email list because I share really um, deep, genuine, personal uh, writings each week, and I would say that that's probably the best place because I'm looking at uh, moving away from Instagram. To be perfectly honest, um, I, I enjoy the benefits of connections and reach of it but it just feels uh not like a place i can really connect genuinely mm. so i would say email list which yeah. if you go to yeah. my instagram you can get on my email list for now or go well, to my I website will, I'll, i'm gonna pop though i'm just typing this out email list i'm gonna pop this in the show notes <laughs> um nice. love you like seriously I aspire to be a writer like Amber. She's such a great writer. So please make sure you, you jump on that. Um, all right. Final question before you get a chance to express and let your boobs have some relaxation. Um, what are your favorite products to support you through your menstrual time? Like what are the things like I, I need that in my cupboard. I need that in my pantry. I have a feeling I know what they might be. Oh, I need this in the bathroom. I need this by the bath. I need this like next next to me on the couch while I'm resting. Like what are your favorite three to five go-to products? Mm. A metal or silicon straw in a full <laughs> in a full um water bottle uh, that has a little bit of Celtic sea salt sprinkled in it if your water isn't remineralized. Um, which ours is, it's just filtered right now. Huge, like hydration for me because I'm breastfeeding. So when I'm bleeding, I need to go extra. What I said before, those, um, those Chinese medicine, that, that concoction, um, of the blood building tea that we boil and make bone broth. Loco love chocolate. <laughs> uh, and lots of feet up the wall. Like lots of time feed up the wall. I would honestly say that that's really it. So I try to nourish, rest, and stay hydrated more. Mm, and and a, and a menstrual cycle cup. Yeah, and a cup everywhere cup. in your cup, bag cup, cup. always. Um, these are such simple things, and I love asking this question to all of our guests for this series <clears throat> because it it doesn't have to be complicated, and you don't no. have to have all the fancy things. Um, I don't know what else. Happy- I'm thinking like, what the fuck else do we need? <laughs> And you'll be happy to know I just I just brought some silicon straws. So when you come over, you don't need to bring yes. your own straw. <laughs> I always have a spare. <laughs> I've always got no, I will always have spe- um straws now. Well, thank you so much. I love you with all of my heart. You're such yeah. a beautiful um sister that I get to choose to have in my life. And I'm so grateful that I, I that I that I found you on the dance floor. And um <laughs> literally. Yeah. <laughs> and it's such an honor to walk life with you and experience you as a mother and a menstruator. So thank you for sharing all of your beautiful stories. Thank you. I owe a huge, huge uh, amount of my understanding and my connection with my cycle. Thanks to you. So really appreciate it. Thank you so much for tuning into every episode of the Well Woman podcast. For everything we mentioned in today's episode, you can find this in the show notes over at wellsome.com forward slash podcast. If this episode excited you, please hit follow on Spotify, which means all of my episodes will pop up in your feed weekly so you never miss a weekly drop. I'd love you to leave a review on Apple Podcasts too. 
loved this episode, come and follow me over on Instagram at wellsome underscore Gemily. Say hi and share what you've taken away from this episode with me. Now, is there a bestie, sister, or a friend who you know who might be fed up, frustrated, and confused with their cycles? Are they ready to join you in awakening their cyclical essence too? Well, take a screenshot of this podcast episode, share it on your socials, email it, text it, or any way you need to get it to them. So together, we can all live in flow, harmony, and balance with our cycles. Now, until next time, beautiful, get connected, listen to your body, and remember, body confidence all begins with living in tune with your menstrual cycle.